The Power Perfect Box was designed as an energy management system. We live in a world of alternating current. Nikolai Tesla won the large debate between he and Edison over alternating versus direct current. Alternating current has seven major key attributes that can be addressed. Number one is the volt. The volt is the pressure that pushes the current. Number two is the amp. It's also called the current. Number three is the watt. It's the product of the volt and the amp. It's in direct proportion to sine wave quality. Number four are electromagnetic fields. Number five, THD or total harmonic distortion. Number six is Ohm's law of resistance. And number seven is frequency or hertz. So, let's tackle each one of these one at a time. I'll move consistently and hopefully make it fun and hopefully you learn something along the way. Number one, the volt. The volt is the pressure that pushes the current throughout the house. If you have a home or office with electricity, electricity isn't naturally moving to each of your outlets. Electricity is pushed by the volt to each of the outlets. Here's an example of the volt. Imagine for a moment that you're outside and you want to water your flowers, right? You would simply crack open, gently, the faucet outside, holding your hose, you'd have a small amount of water coming out. You would then use that to water your flowers or your bushes. Now, if you see something up high that you also want to water, what do you do? It's easy. You put your thumb over the edge of the hose and you squirt it up. What we did by putting our thumb over the hose is we constricted the area and we increased the pressure. Increasing the pressure is equal to increasing the voltage because it's the volt is the pressure that pushes it. Well, what's the water? That's the current or the amp. Putting our thumb over it does not increase the amp. If we want more amps, perhaps we're going to wash our car, we go back to our faucet outside and we turn it up. That's the amp. They say it's not the volts that kill you. I don't know if you've heard that. It's the amps. Because all the volt is, is a measure of the pressure pushing the actual amp, whose other name is current. It's the current that gets you wet. So when you multiply this measure of the volt times the measure of the amp, you get a product that is the watt. Here's an example. Most of the outlets in your life are 120 volts. Your vacuum cleaner, for example, might run on 2 amps. If we multiply 120 volts times 2 amps, we get 240 watts. And the watts is the measure that will demonstrate that you actually purchase. And that's a product of time. If I turn my faucet all the way up, I'm buying more water than when I turn it down. But when I turn it off, I'm not buying any. So the time that I have it on is where the hour comes into kilowatt. A kilowatt is a thousand watts over a period of time that you had your vacuum on, you had your air conditioner on. Makes sense, right? So number one is the volt, it's the pressure. Number two is the amp, it's actually the current. And number three is the product, it's the watt that you buy over a measure of time. Number four is EMF, electromagnetic fields. So much is being said these days on electromagnetic fields, potentially being harmful to the human. I have no comment on this, I don't know this, but we can prove definitively, it's often hard on equipment. Plants don't like it and animals don't like it. Um, your Blu-ray player definitely doesn't like it. But we need a certain amount of electromagnetic fields to make our world one. How, you ask? Inside a motor or an alternator, we have a winding of copper wire. When we apply voltage to this copper wire, it excites and creates what? An electromagnetic field. Once we create this field, we can get something to spin. If we can get something to spin, we can perform work. We can grind copy beans, we can blow air through a fan, we can lift a garage door. What's interesting is a motor is almost the same thing as an alternator or a generator. If we have a copper wire and we spin something, applying mechanical force, we get out electricity. 
if we apply electricity and create the field, we get mechanical work out the other side. They're very similar. That electromagnetic field is what makes the system run. What's interesting though is this electromagnetic field has an effect on the current, on the amp, because of the sine wave. Alternating current moves in a wave much like water. As this wave gets distorted, something happens. It takes more amps to do the same amount of work. So rather than having an air conditioner run on two or three amps, you have an air conditioner running on four, five, or, or even six amps because of this bad sine wave. So while electromagnetic fields are needed to do work, we don't want excessive electromagnetic fields for several reasons. Number one, it can be hard on biological things. Number two, we know definitively that it can be hard on electronics. And number three, in today's economy, we don't want to purchase any extra amps. So we're going to show definitively how electromagnetic fields may be reduced. Number five, total harmonic distortion, dirty electricity. You actually know what dirty electricity is, you just didn't know that you knew. I remember when I was a youth, when my mom would vacuum, I could see it on the television. Definitively, I could hear a blow dryer on the radio, or maybe you've noticed in your home theater when you're watching a movie that crack or pop in the speakers when maybe the refrigerator or the air conditioner comes on. That's THD, total harmonic distortion. These days, a lot of inverters um, for solar systems or LED lighting or CFL lighting have a disclaimer of total harmonic distortion. You don't want more than about 5% total harmonic distortion on your line or on your load centers. Number six, the sixth key attribute of alternating current is Ohm's Law of Resistance. Most men learned about Ohm's Law of Resistance in their high school days, putting in their first car stereo. I remember specifically my own experience of buying the 250 watt deck and then opting to not use aluminum wire but stepping up and buying superior, thicker copper wire. Because if I had 300 watts at my deck, I wanted 300 watts to hit my speakers. And you lose some of that electrical current over distance. That's called Ohm's Law of Resistance. And it is the conductant that you're using and the applied current. Number seven, the final attribute of alternating current is Hertz or frequency. Frequency is how often the waves hit the beach. If you've been to the lake and the waves ch ch crash in versus maybe being in the beach of Hawaii where slowly these big waves build and crash, the lake has a higher frequency of waves hitting the beach versus Hawaii. America operates at 60 hertz. That's what a hertz is. As that alternating current that we talked about comes in, each peak being the top of the wave, as those waves hit the beach, how fast they come, that's frequency. So quickly again, volts, amps, watts, electromagnetic fields, total harmonic distortion, Ohm's law of resistance, and frequency. We talked about the Power Perfect box being designed as a whole home energy management system. So, the Power Perfect box was designed to affect all attributes of alternating current. So let's talk about that. Number one, the volt. How do you regulate the voltage? It's actually quite easy. Transient voltage and voltage spikes are what we call surges. Lots of products have been made over the years because it's important in alternating current to regulate the voltage. So, the Power Perfect box uses multiple MOVs, metal oxide barristers, to help trim the peaks. It is a quality surge protection system for your whole home, wired in at the panel or plugging in affecting its circuit. Also, it's not a battery, but when voltage briefly dips, the Power Perfect box can also bump the voltage. That's important nowadays. We know a lot of uh, gentlemen here in Western Montana who actually own appliance stores. And we've talked to the owners, to the salesmen, even the techs, and they tell us something pretty consistently. Number one, appliances are not made the way they used to be. 
and they brought out two main points that maybe you've experienced. Number one, they're lighter. I don't know if you've felt a TV recently, if you felt a washer or a dryer or a dishwasher. They are indeed physically lighter. Well, they've also come down in price. Is there a chance that they're made less expensively, potentially to save you money, but therefore also potentially not lasting as long? Um, they tell us in our operations, because they use a lot of our equipment, that appliances these days just don't last as long as they used to. Maybe that's a result of being them lighter, or the second part, they have circuit boards. A lot of appliances these days have two things. They have a circuit board, a brain, perhaps a chip, and in many, a radio frequency transmitter or receiver so they can communicate with other things like the smart meter or each other or even remote control, depending. Are circuit boards susceptible or vulnerable to transient voltages, spikes, distortions? Absolutely, without a doubt. So the Power Perfect box will not only definitively save money on electricity, something that will prove beyond contestation, it can also make those things live a longer, happier, healthier life. When they perform better for you, you're living in that comfortable lifestyle we talked about. And at the same time, if appliances are only living about seven years these days versus the 15 to 20 they used to, if it saves you a dishwasher, a washer dryer or a refrigerator, even one time in its 10 year lifetime, it might by that very fact be the best purchase that you've made. Number two is the amp. The amp is actually pretty easy to reduce based on sine wave. Sine wave quality and that lack of electromagnetic field is in direct and measurable proportion to the amp. If you save amps, it's possible then to save watts, saving on your bill. If you reduce amps, several things happen. Number one, the equipment runs better, right? It runs cooler, more as it was designed. If something runs cooler, it can last longer or potentially charge faster and also save you money. So as we talked about in the beginning, your, your air conditioner isn't just operating more effectively, making your home more comfortable, it's actually saving you money. So when you reduce the amp, you can reduce the watt. Next, electromagnetic fields. We have a meter here specifically designed to read electromagnetic fields. We'll talk about that. There's something easy to reduce if you're looking for them. And today, this has a lot of implications, not just saving money, but potential health benefits to you, your family, your plants, or your pets. Next, total harmonic distortion, THD. Somebody vacuums. You see it on the, uh, you see it on the TV or hear it on a radio. This meter is specifically designed to measure total harmonic distortion. Ohm's law of resistance is easy. If you remember, the amount of losses that we have to resistance is in direct proportion, directly linear proportionate to the amount of current that you push. If you're pushing five amps to your air conditioner all day, you have more losses to resistance than if you're pushing two amps all day. A place that a person could definitively save two or three percent on their power bill there alone. And finally, frequency. This box is designed to saturate out at a frequency and then maintain. So we're going to cover it again. We're going to regulate the voltage. We're going to reduce the amps, reducing the watt. We're going to reduce electromagnetic fields, total harmonic distortion. We're going to lessen our losses to resistance and help with frequency.